Greetings and welcome back to SmartWatchSticks.com. Heart rate variability. There's a lot of things that do it. There's a little finger thing that does it. There's the aura ring that does it. There's even the Fitbit that does it. So what is it? What can you get out of it? And why do you need it? That's what we're going to talk about today. A lot of times we go into just product reviews and just yada, yada, yada about the specs and move on. Today is about heart rate variability. And I want you guys to understand what it is so you can really get the most out of it because having a good reading in uh, baseline and seeing deviations from that baseline is really, really valuable. The best description I've seen so far comes directly from Fitbit. By golly, it's Google after all, right? So what is it and why do we measure it? Heart rate variability, get this now, is the time between your heartbeats. You know, beat, 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 it's that space. And it can change from night to night. For example, your heart rate may be telling you that your heart is beating at 60 beats per minute, but it doesn't mean it's beating once a second. Yeah, you'll see that graphically in just a second. To get a little more technical than we usually do, <laughs> and that's true, the actual variance in time between heartbeats down to the milliseconds is a variability calculated during deep sleep now for the Fitbit, like this Fitbit Sense. During your sleep, this is calculated, and it can be used as a measure of recovery. According to the Harvard Health blog, and that's a clickable link if you want to go there to check it out. I'll have it in the show notes for you. Measuring it, the HRV, can tell you about your physical resilience and ability to perform at high levels. That is, how readily your body can transition from rest to activity and back. By the way, and a whole lot more, HRV is really, really interesting. Harvard Health tells us that your HRV is controlled by the part of your body called the autonomic nervous system, ANS. Essentially, your ANS regulates normal bodily functions such as heart rate, of course, but also things like your breathing, your blood pressure, digestion, and more. Told you, it goes deeper. It's divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Don't go away. It's going to get better. Unless you love this stuff, then it's great, huh? Or, as you might know them, your flight or, fight or flight response, you know, that sudden adrenaline rush, versus your rest and digest when you're relaxed and just being, uh, those types of responses. So both of them are in your ANS. It's just a balance between how they act. If your ANS is functioning normally, balanced between fight or flight and rest and digest modes, it receives all kinds of information from the regions of your brain called the hypothalamus. And you won't even notice as it keeps your body working day in and day out. It's when the balance in your ANS is disrupted that your body's fight or flight mode may overcompensate, resulting in lower HRV. Ooh, which do you want, higher or lower? Well, you're about to find out. That kind of was a giveaway, right? Higher's better, I'll tell you. Let me start with this. Hey, you guys all know this squiggle, right? This is one human heartbeat, and it's in great detail now. Surf the internet. I have. I don't see anybody talking about this stuff to this level for wearables like this. So if you're interested, this is this is a good video today. You've got your PQRST and you've got time, okay, going across here. And these are the different intervals. This is called the PR interval from right there over that first little hump before it dips down and jumps up. At that point, all the way to the end of this little after effect here is called the QT interval. There's a J point and there's different segments. That's the baseline languaging that these cardiologists and others in the heart business talk about. So when you look at an EKG, and we've done that here, haven't we? With several different wearables, we'll produce an EKG or ECG um, just depending on whether you're German or English speaking, that's how it's spelled. The ECG, EKG, can show you between heartbeats a delay. The RR interval is the time 
it takes to go between here and here. And if it's 60, if your heart rate's at a pulse at 60 beats per second, theoretically it would be once every second, right? Like that. However, this is where heart rate variability kicks in. It's not always that way. Your heart will be a little faster, a little slower between beats. The average over time will be your heart rate. That's why heart rate sensors, when they're giving you your heart rate reading, take a little while to stabilize and give you a reading because it's it's picking all these up and averaging it all out to give you one fixed rate like this, okay? 60 beats per second, but it might actually look like this. Now, you go a little bit deeper with this stuff and you find, oh, elite HRV. And that's kind of where we're leading into today with uh, this little device that actually is designed to measure really carefully your heart rate variability. Elite HRV, and you'll see the links to it here shortly, can track this comprehensive biomarker in a very unique way. This uh, non-invasive measurement of your automatic nervous system will let you regulate all of these different aspects of your physiology as you, one, get your baseline, two, see what uh, deviation you're making from that baseline, Three, go through a lot of the information these guys uh, produce. Four, take their class. They actually have an HRV course if you really want to get deep into it. And five, really implement this in your life in working with heart rate variability to improve your overall health. So I'll just show you this on the screen. Again, we're going over it. It's talking about how it works, what HRV uh, is, and their specialized app that they have, which we'll show you in a second, that gives you deep insight into that. It's all about managing all different aspects of stress, your mental, your structural, your environmental, societal, all of these things. Um, through this one single measurement when done properly. So we were asking, is a higher or lower number better? Here you go. What does it mean? When you have a higher HRV, it's generally correlated to mean increased fitness level, better health, resilience, a youthfulness. Somebody talk, sometimes people talk about your chronological age and you know your biological age. And uh, a higher HRV gives you a younger overall perceived or body age. Willpower, calm, positive emotions all come with higher HRV. If you tend to be stressed in your job, at home, overwork, always late, just concerned, and you get more into that flight or fight or flight response mode and your HRV goes down, You'll have reduced fitness levels, poorer health, increased disease, so forth and so forth. And we're not diagnosing on any of this stuff. We're giving you biomarkers for your own education and information. Just want to be clear with that. These readings are for you to use to enhance your knowledge about uh, your health. They also have this little product called the Core Sense Heart Rate Variability Sensor. And this is that finger thing I was talking about. The good news about it is it's really cool. And it ties to their app in a wonderful way. The bad news about it is it's no longer available. Yeah, I know. Why am I reviewing a product you can't buy? Because it's not so much this thing, because there are other devices that can generate good e uh, uh heart rate variability readings that can tie into the app and give you that information. And more and more watches and things, Apple Watch perhaps, Fitbit perhaps, and others coming online should be able to do that. So we use this as a uh, demonstration model to show you what the app can do and what you can do with that data. So let's unbox it quickly and take a look at it. The Core Sense device no longer available. However, there's a list of compatible devices you can go to. We'll have a link for you, and that'll show you some of the other things you, uh, you could purchase that would allow you to do what we're going to do with this discontinued little thing here. It's inside this box called the Core Sense, and it's basically got a manual that tells you about it. It's got some tips on how to take a good measurement. And it's got the little thing running. Now, I charged it up 
and it does no on off button it will run for a little while and then time out when it's blinking it's not yet paired to the phone app but when it is it'll be um connected and it's just a simple thing you stick your finger in here and it's going to measure just like the the device you can get at the drug store that does heart rate and blood oxygen readings but this one instead does hrv there's no display you absolutely have to have it attached to the app there's a charging cord in here as well and then there's the app it's called elite hrv when you go in there and Get it in your Google Play Store. It'll look like this. And before I open it, I wanted to show you some of the screens because I'm just starting with this. Hopefully, this will be kind of a part one of a two-part thing. And in a few months, perhaps, I'll give you a uh, an updated review where I'm taking a reading every single morning and getting my baseline and an actual bell chart of my uh, overall HRV at my age and stress level and everything else. But some of the screens you'll see is there's a daily guidance. When you do your morning readiness reading, you're going to get one flat number. That's a uh, relative balance number compared to your baseline. You'll also be able to see the complete chart of real-time HRV and, and, and this is really critical, biofeedback. They've developed a system where you can biofeedback. You know, that's where your body can react to a signal or information that it's receiving in real time. And it's, it's like if you're doing one of those breathing exercise things, and as you inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, you kind of get your pattern going. And then as you relax, it tells you to inhale slower and exhale slower until it really draws it out. If it's done with biofeedback for you, wow, you're really entrained in that. Um, not too many of those are on the market. This is a biofeedback on your HRV. You can have uh, accurate heart rate uh, variability that you can trust. It says here's the actual detailed technical results. You don't get this typically from smartwatches and uh, other devices that just give you the one number. That's why this... Uh, little thing and a few others similar to it are really great at giving you very detailed information. Here's that uh, comparison with the population for your age and uh, uh, gender and so forth. It'll show you where you are in comparison with others. You can customize uh, the feedback I'm talking about for breathing uh, to reduce your overall stress. And then there's other um, devices or other apps that you can tie in with this, like Strava and Sports Tracks and so forth, uh, for comparison and connection as well. You can get uh, trends in your progress and view your overall history. So let's jump directly into it and take a reading, shall we? Now I've already got the app loaded and ready, so I just say open. It brings it up and it pops up with this stream screen that says come back tomorrow morning because I didn't take my morning reading. But I'm going to, um, you can turn off these notifications if you want to, but not right now because I really want to work with this. You got all these tabs across here. That button is for taking a reading. You got trends and biofeedback availability, everything. So let's take a reading. We're going to tap that and we're going to stick the finger in here. Now there's a little ridge. I don't know if you can see it right there. You come right up to the edge of the ridge. Either hand, any finger, but the, the main thing is you want to stay real still. And certain fingers work better for um, people than different people. And um, you just have to experiment with it, they say. So I'm going to take my morning rare, uh Thing, my meet my reading it's waiting to receive the data from this particular unit and there we go now it's starting the live reading and it goes for one minute so I'm gonna skip ahead and we'll pick it back up on the video you'll see the whole chart for the current minute we're on and that way I can be, be real still for a few seconds oops gotta show you that I scratched my nose with my other hand uh, anyway we are in a preview which is where it's correlating itself and now I'm going to actually start the reading because it's kind of got a, a baseline connection going here we go
Start the reading. Now this is the actual reading. Here we go. Bing! And it just finished. Okay, we have our reading. I got a one day streak. Yeah, this is only my second reading on this, guys. We're just getting starting started here. So our morning readiness tomorrow, I'll get my first morning readiness score once I've had accumulation on here. Then we're going to basically establish a baseline with consistent readings taken at the same time when I get up in the morning. And then I can prepare, compare my uh, stats with people around me by putting in birthday and gender information if I want. And as you may imagine, I'm a little stressed doing the video. I'm not totally relaxed and I didn't just get up. I've had two cups of coffee. You know, here I am coming in down here in the lower part of the average bell curve uh, compared against people age 40 to 49. If you're younger, say you're in the 25 to 29 bracket, you see this is way, way low. I'm considerably more stressed than the normal folks are. The really relaxed folks are up here. But check this out. You see how it's kind of a slow rise and then a rapid fall off. It seems, I just observation, that in this age group, there's not a lot of people that are really relaxed. The best they've got is uh, hitting around 70. And then look, by the, at, at a point score of 75, it's way, way lower. Whereas the more senior folks, let's say 60 to 69, it's just the other way. There's... Uh, a sense of relaxation of sorts, a higher possibility of having a higher score and therefore more uh, relaxation, not fight or flight response, right? And then it peaks and then it tapers off. Does that have something to do with wisdom, you think? That if you've been around a long time, you got more wisdom and you're not as easily stressed. That I don't know. I don't know. But these are the scores. And, of course, you can change it for female um, and see the difference going on there as well in any of the different uh, age brackets. And you can do your own age in there. As it will show up as well. Here's that first category for for really young folks so we can save that data and there's my results for today you can view all data data and population uh, comparison like we did here's trends that you'll be able to get that's why i showed you the um the pictures from the app that show you the this stuff uh, here's a breathing program you can enter into and go through the mindfulness relaxation to help improve your HRV. Resonance, deep calm. Look at all of this stuff. This is all in this app and um, it's really focused on HRV. And then you can listen to different podcasts, read information, hear from the uh, founder of it. And, of course, go on over to the EliteHRV.com website on your phone or your computer to do um, even more stuff. So let me summarize on this. So HRV, heart rate variability, is starting to show up in all kinds of devices, watches, bands, little devices you stick your finger in, and associated apps are giving you more and more detailed information about what you'll find when you measure your heart rate variability. Okay, this is the Elite HRV app, which is the most sophisticated and detailed one. However, if you've got a Fitbit like the Sense here, here, you come down into your health metrics and without the premium program you can get access to quite a bit of information but you can get your 30-day trends with the um, the subscription you have heart rate variability you don't have the detail that you get uh, from this but if you've got the watch you can certainly get a nighttime summary reading of a single data point that when you learn more about this, you can get the actual readings themselves and more of a description of what it is and why it matters. Not for medical purposes, but just for your basic information. You also, if you happen to own the Aura Ring, you can get the same kind of information with the Aura Ring when you go to your sleep tab. 
in the sleep tab, you scroll down, you get your resting heart rate in here. And your lowest average, your lowest one and your average. And then there's a whole section on average HRV showing you how your heart rate variability throughout your dreams and your deep sleep moved and changed and the average that you got for that particular night. Again, this is taking just specific data for you, not giving you the detailed breakdown or a biofeedback process that you can get with the Elite HRV, but it does give you something. So what are you looking for? The higher overall, the better. From EHRV, they say, HRV is like your individual fingerprint for stress tolerance, adaptability, and resiliency. So it's good to establish a baseline and then from that baseline, see if you are more or less stressed out each morning when you wake up by getting a reading. From hospitals to sports facilities, the underlying theme is to non-invasively gain deeper objective insight into one's body's systemic condition. How are people who are, are working with HRV actually using it? Some track the progress and guide treatment plans for all kinds of conditions. It can be used to improve resilience and adaptability. You can customize training and optimize recovery time sports enthusiasts. You have personalized nutrition, sleep, and exercise protocols available. It can provide early warning signs for changes in health or overtraining. You can use HRV readings to rebalance the nervous system with live biofeedback. You can objectively understand motivation and willpower and how that affects your stress. You can identify risks of morbidity and mortality. Yep, all this stuff comes from EliteHRV.com. Check that out. So I wish I could tell you where you could get this one, the um, special little dongle thing called the core sense uh, but unfortunately it's not for sale anymore you may be able to find it on um, ebay or an aftermarket it does do the job and it does it well but there are other uh, devices available so check the show notes under the video for a link that can guide you to that because you really do need to have a sensor that can accurately collect all of the data you need on heart rate variability to be able to pass it over to the app to get that real detailed breakdown. But you can get started if you own a specific Fitbit that supports this. And of course, use the Fitbit app. If you have an Aura ring, there's other rings that are coming on the market, all of which will be supporting HRV. And we have a huge number of uh, watches that do HRV readings as well. But they do warn you over here at EHRV that a lot of those readings are taken periodically, like every 10 minutes or something, or every hour throughout the day. So it's a snapshot, and you really can't average them all together and get one number that represents your whole day. That's crazy. <laughs> so use that intermittently for the moment, but um, rely on something like this where you take a reading at a specific time every day if you want to go into deep detail about your, uh, your overall health change from a baseline. Thanks for watching, gang. It's a little bit different video we did today, but I wanted to spring off of that to uh, give you a better understanding of at least one metric, heart rate variability. We'll see you again soon, and thanks for watching.